All right. We are now being joined by Curtis Millinder. We will go to our first question with Steve Jewin. Your line is live. Thank you, Curtis. I appreciate your time today. And my question for you is you're three and two now in Bellator. This is your third stint with the promotion. See yourself right now in Bellator MMA. You said that one more time. Oh, yes. Uh, you're three and two right now in Bellator. Third run in the promotion. You just came off a win over Moses Marietta. So where do you see yourself in the promotion right now? Uh, you know, I feel like with a with a win, a dominant win, I can be, you know, right on my way to the top of the promotion. There's a lot of good fights for me um, at 70 and 85. So, uh, you know, I'm, everywhere I go, I want to be successful everywhere I go. So um, if I go to a promotion, I'm here to take it over. Is that a goal of yours then to be a two weight class champion at 170 and 185? Um, yeah, you know, uh, I want to definitely take 170 first, but you know, I've been dipping and dabbling uh, back and forth with the 185 thing, so uh, I'm, I'm sure I can do both. All right, and how do you feel about Saba Umasi as an opponent? He's got some very nasty power shots, but I'm sure you've got a lot in store for him as well. Uh, you know, uh, unfortunately for him, like in order to use that power, you got to get close. It's a lot of things you got to get through. Um, speed kills power every time. So, uh, uh, you know, he has to cross that line. And unfortunately, that line has fireworks, it's fireworks at that line, bombs at that line. You know, it, it's, it's, it's a rough place to be. All right. Well, we'll look forward to you dropping bombs on Friday. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you. Our next question comes from Giancarlo Alino. Hi, Curtis. Uh, you've uh, had to adapt to this new norm now, like a lot of fighters with uh, the gym protocols and uh, changing the way everyone uh, prepares for a fight. So how have you adapted to this new norm and preparing for this fight? Um, you know, it's, it's given me a lot more time to uh, just become a better fighter, not, e not just physically, but mentally too. You know, I, I've always been a fight nerd. Uh, I watch a lot of fighting. I, I do a lot of things to mentally... Uh, prepare myself for fights, but this just added to it, you know, uh, more time to watch video, uh, not so much, so much strain on the body. Cause I'm not able to train like I normally do. Um, I got to add some weightlifting, which I, I was not really against, but I've, I've never really done too much like heavy weightlifting, but, um, I was able to add that. So it's, it's, it's been a plus for me. And what's been the most difficult part about that? Like, uh, is it more like the striking or working with a training partner? Like, how has it changed uh, the way you do things on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, I wouldn't say it's been any difficulty as far as the preparation. Um, I just miss everybody. <laughs> I just miss everybody. <laughs> That's all. So uh, um, I haven't been able really to work out with my, uh, my head striking coach um, as much as I wanted to during this whole thing. But, you know, it's, um, you know, we were able to sit down and talk and, you know, he's, he's a great teacher. So even him just talking to me and explaining things to me goes, goes, goes a long way. And final question for me, just uh, now the new uh, thing with no fans is a new norm. So uh, any thought to that? Is it change anything for you coming into this fight? Um, no, not really. I know, I know people are watching, so I can still go out there and perform just whether it's an audience here or on TV. I'm, I know I'm still being watched. So I know I still have to perform. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you. All right, our next question comes from Ben Keeley. Hi, Curtis. Um, so you said that you're, you're missing people during the lockdown. Have you taken on any new hobbies or projects apart from the weightlifting during the lockdown? Um, uh, just cooking a lot more and gaining weight. Um, <laughs> um, and the weightlifting, just working with different things. I added like club bells and the Atlas bars. So um, that's it really, a lot more reading. And is the, the weight that you put on, is that, is that what's uh, making you think about possibly moving up to middleweight? Well, I was, kind of, I was contemplating it before the quarantine. I fought in January. Um, it was supposed to be at 85. So, um, and we ended up going to 80. So um, I've been contemplating it for a while. You know, I'm getting older. Uh, I've never struggled to make 170. It's not hard at all to make 170, but you know, as, I'm starting to get older. I, I want to, I don't want to put a, a lot of miles on the, on the body. So anything that can, you know, make me uh, get to these fights a little easier and a little health, more healthy. That's, that's, that was, that's the real goal behind it. 
Uh, one fighter that se- you seem to be always linked with a fight with is Michael Venom Page. I'm just wondering, is that chapter over now or do you think that fight will ever happen? I mean, uh, a, a very, very tiny part of me believes it may happen eventually, but I'm not, I'm not, if it happens, it happens. Okay. Uh, one last one for me. I know you, you, you like to study fights. Just who, who are your favorite fighters to watch at the moment? Um, right now, Style Bender, um, Aaron Pico, uh, and uh, those are probably like the main two right now outside within MMA. But uh, uh, watching a lot of boxers, I'm, I'm I'm trying to add some new things without really giving it away. I'm trying to uh, you know go to the body a little more. All right, our next question comes from Kevin Varghese. Hey, Curtis. Dope fit, by the way. Thank uh, you very much, sir. One question for you is, uh, you said a couple of days ago that you're planning on testing free agency. Um, uh, in January, you said you wanted the MVP fight. Uh, so, you know, are you going to, if you win uh, this fight this uh, Friday, do you plan on, you know, staying around to see if you can catch up to MVP or do you know, do you want to probably go to possibly UFC one championship, you know, look, look where your moves will be. You know, I, I have a, I have a a family to support and take care of. So uh, the first it's always, you know, where my services are always going to be to the highest bidder. Um, And that's just because I have people to support and I take care of. But um, as far as like the MVP thing, like I said, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, when somebody keeps dangling, giving you stuff and taking it away, uh, you know, that gets old real fast. And that's that's how I feel about MVP. All right. So, you know, recently uh, we saw Kamaru Usman, you know, defeat um, Jorge Masvidal for the UFC Welterweight Championship. Uh, if say you were to match yourself up against Kamaru Usman, you know how do you see yourself, you know, fighting against even uh, the champions right now against Kamaru Usman, Bellator champion Douglas Lima? How do you see yourself right now as a contender? Um, I, f- I feel like I compete. I can compete, you know, especially now with this new confidence, with just being on the ground. I, I get a lot of a little a lot of backlash just for my my wrestling or. Uh, for the think of the lack of my wrestling that they they think I don't really have, but um, you know, just even with the last fight, just applying it, seeing how easy it is just to apply my my skill set and the comfort level that I have with just applying it, um, it's made me a way better fighter. So, um, you know, I'm not I, I wouldn't be worried about neither one. You know, it'll be uh, a good fight with Usman and a phenomenal fight with with Douglas Lima. Like that that would be crazy. That'd be really fun. But uh, I feel like I, I I feel like I can beat them both. You have to feel like you beat them both. If you don't think you can beat the champ, you need to go sit down and do something different. Our last question comes from Andrew McCarroll. Hi, Curtis. Hope you're well. Um, right. I know you're a big WWE fan. Uh, who do you Huge. like there? And is that a, a career choice you'd be interested in? Oh man, Randy Orton. Randy <laughs> Orton. That's the man. That is the man. And. Um, so Randy Orton and uh, Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt is like, uh, to me, might be my favorite guy of all time on the mic already. So filling there by RKO, I'm gonna put that as my best down. Right. Um, <laughs> you were saying after how things uh, finished with the UFC, you felt like you were fighting with a, a chip on your shoulder. Now, after things have ended the way they did, how do you feel now with your your second or sorry, your third one with Bellator? Um, you know, I still have to have that chip on my shoulder, you know, even though it's the past of the past, but, um, what I did in January was, was, was amazing. So I I can't change it. You know, I got to continue to fight with the chip on my shoulder so I can continue to go out there and have performances like I did last time. You had obviously the MVP fight and then the Joe Schilling fight, like would have been kind of two big signature fights for you take away from you. You said that you're going to test free agency, Scott Coker and Bellator come to you and say, Pick who you want to, to sign on the dotted line and stay. What's the name that comes out of your mouth? To tell you the truth, at this point, Joe, I have a I have a really fun story about uh, the why I want the Joe Schilling fight so bad. It, it'll come. I'll, I'll I'll tell it eventually. So I got I got to save it so we have some 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 stories. So I don't get mixed up. So thanks a lot. No <laughs> really problem. appreciate that. Thanks very much, Curtis. Best of luck. Thank you.
All right, cheers. Thank you very much, Curtis. We appreciate it.